Last night it started out well as Scott Casimir retired the first 12 batters he faced. But then the lefty hit a snag as the Twins rallied for five runs in the seventh inning. But the ever-reliable bullpen saved the day. And not only did they make Oakland history, they helped Casimir get his 13th win of the season. Tonight, it's right-hander Jeff Samarja's turn against the Twins. The A's have won 11 in a row versus Minnesota, and Samarja would love to get another win in front of the Coliseum faithful. Game three, A's-Twins, next. Saturday night baseball from the O.Co. Coliseum. Big crowd on hand tonight. The A's trying to make it three in a row over the Twins. And the Twins will send Trevor May to the mound. And he will be making his major league debut. And tonight, Jeff Samarja is going to pitch for the Athletics. And well, the A's are going to honor Tony La Russa. He's a Hall of Famer. That's the bobblehead giveaway tonight. Tony's in the house. So the A's will try to put on a good performance for the Hall of Fame manager. Twins A's coming up on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Jeff Samarja will be making his seventh start for the A's. And Ray, he's really been pretty good in all six of his first starts. You know, he loves to take the baseball. Of course, following the starting pitches that he's doing, he takes the ball and he throws strikes. He is kind of intimidated because of his height. He will give up some long balls. He'll strike out the great split finger fastball. He has on occasion given up the home run, which might hurt him a little bit, but it's not really taking anything away from his style of pitching. Sure, he gives up the home runs. But if you look at his style of pitching, he's around the plate, which at times, because of that, he might give up a home run. He did to Longoria in the Tampa Bay Rays just in town. Settled down with a great split finger fastball, a lot of movement on his two-seam fastball. He is a great pitcher, an old-school type pitcher. He loves the baseball. He wants to stay out there as long as possible. And the Twins are going to send the young man Trevor May. He's 24 years old. He's a right-hander, and he's making his major league debut. And he's basically against a pretty good ball club with the Athletics, the best team in baseball. And you look at what he's capable of doing. A lot of minor league stars, 17 this year, AAA. But the thing that he does so well, supposedly, according to Rick Anderson, he throws strikes. Midnight is fastball. He has the assortment of pitches that he can throw. But for him tonight, I'm sure a lot of nerves, spending a lot of his time in the minor leagues, finally getting his chance to start at this level. All right, and as always, we'll keep an eye on the Angels game. A's with a four-game lead over the Angels in the AL West coming into tonight's action. So, first pitch is Coming up in just a moment, it's the A's and the Minnesota Twins on Tony La Russa bobblehead night here at the Coliseum. We'll be back.
Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Right now at Jack in the Box, try Jack's Spicy Chicken Club Combo for just $4.99 plus tax. And by Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. All right, we're just moments away from first pitch. Game three of this four-game series between the Oakland A's and the Minnesota Twins. So, Derek Norris and the Athletics, they're set to go, and so are we. Well, it feels like maybe late September or even early April. It's a chilly night. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is now open daily. It says 62 degrees and feels even cooler than that. And not a lot of sunshine late in the day here at the Coliseum. So cloudy and cool on a Saturday night at the Coliseum. Here's the lineup tonight for the visiting Minnesota Twins. Santana, Dozier, Plouffe, Vargas, Willingham, Parmley, Escobar, Fryer, and Schaefer. It is Jeff Samarja making his seventh start since joining the Athletics in the early part of July before the trading deadline. Overall, the 24th start for the tall right-hander, and he has been very good for the Athletics. Matter of fact, we detailed in our open about the home runs that he's given up. He's given at least one in all of his start, with the exception of his Oakland debut against the Blue Jays. So he's facing the Twins second time. He faced them in 2012 as a member of the Chicago Cubs, but uh, I don't think it was a pennant race at that time for the Cubs and Samarja. Defense behind Samarja. Fold, Crisp, and Reddick in the outfield. Donaldson, Lowry, Sogard, Moss on the infield. Norris is your catcher. Samarja is ready. Danny Santana steps in the box. So it is time for baseball here in Oakland. Samarja kicks, and the first pitch is down around the knees for a strike. A's won three to nothing on Thursday night. A's won six to five last night. And that one is hooked foul, so quick 0 2. So the A's trying to make it three in a row in this series over the Twins. Umpires tonight, Pat Holberg will call balls and strikes. A nice winning streak for the A's against the Twins. Might as well continue. 11 in a row. O 2 pitch is belted toward right center, but Coco got a good jump, and Coco makes the catch. Time now for the Nissan keys to the game for Jeff Samarja. Avoid the long ball. He's given up uh, six as we mentioned, and of course rely on the bullpen. If you have to, you're in good hands because they are good. New uh, Oakland record for consecutive scoreless innings out of the A's bullpen, and they needed it last night as the Twins came up with five in the seventh. But the bullpen came in, shut them down with the big man, left-hander, getting his 18th save. That's what the most as a lefty for the Athletics, mm -hmm. the save category. First pitch strike to Brian Dozier. Dozier hitting 240 with 19 home runs and 49 RBIs. And that one's hit down the left field line into the corner and it's fair. Full picks it up, gets it back in quickly, but it's going to be a one out double for Dozier. See well, this young man has 19 home runs the way he's just very quick and it's unusual for a second baseman to have the kind of power that he has but a bell tie fastball very quick as the ball was running in on him and he's a strong young man and fortunately this one stayed in the yard did bounce off the wall fold played it nicely but those are thinking two all the way and able to get in safely. So here's Trevor Ploof. First pitch of the game from Samarja was down at the knees but Last one to Dozier and the one that Santana hit the center field, both elevated. Kloof hitting 249 with eight homers, 52 RBIs. Kloof had an RBI hit last night. That's his one hit in the series. And that one off the foot is Samarja. Good movement running in on Ploof. Well, you could see the movement with his swing. You knew he's going to beat it on his lower body someplace. And 
Of course it misses chin guard hits him on the top of the big toe. They'll say with a sinker ball pitcher. I don't care if you're you're wearing the shin guard or you need to because you've been hit wear it anyway. And I'd wear a catcher shin guard and protect the entire top of the knee all the way down. Cover the uh, the toe the guys won't do it. But the way some larger throws a sinker ball you have a pretty good chance of beating yourself up. That one in off the plate one and two the count. Kenny Vargas the. Switch hitter waits in the on deck circle. Just missed outside, but pretty good teaser pitch by Samarja. Well, it was a teaser, and he didn't offer at it, but that's the way you throw the slider when you have a chance to try to get him to chase, have it look like a strike, and then out of the strike zone. And there's a line drive base hit center field. And the Twins are going to take a lead here in the first inning, so Trevor Plouffe drives in Brian Dozier, 1 0 Minnesota. Slider missed outside and then came back with a fastball inside, similar to the one that Dozier hit the left field line. Look at the height of it, and it's almost as if Plu figured you're going to throw the slider away. I'm not going to offer at it, and then come back with another fastball inside, and that's pretty good two strike hitting. Now our Expo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. So Ploof gets his 53rd RBI, and here's Vargas. Swings and misses. After this guy on the A's infield might be Josh Donaldson, that Vargas is batting left handed. Yeah. He confirmed last night, Cap, as we talked about maybe the hardest ball he said's ever been hit at him, went through his legs, and he was happy to jump. Strike call, 0 and 2. Now ball through the legs and it was ruled a hit. That tells you how hard it was hit. That was a true definition description of the hot corner because it got very hot with that night drive. Right past Samarja Sogard flips and they get the out at second base. Ball just kind of trickled past Samarja and then the middle infielders almost had to make a decision on who was going to go get it. Goes as a fielder's choice. Well, fortunately, one went to the bag, the other caught it, and Lowry took the route like he was going to go get it, and then got to the bag at the glove with no flip of the hand, just a flip of the glove by Sogard to Lowry, kept his foot on the bag. But you're right, he started. Lowry looked like he started in behind the bag, but fortunately, he saw Sogard enough time for him to make the play. So here's Willingham, first pitch strike. Willingham 209 11 homers 32 RBIs hitless in this series. 0 for 4 Thursday and then last night. Pinch hit. To end the game he struck out. A good slider there. So a quick 0 2 to Willingham. Slider again. This one's outside. Remember we saw Jeff Samarja show up from when he's acquired by the Athletics from the Cubs and cool night. He was wearing long, long sleeves. He said, "I love cold weather." Of course, our praise on Indiana. Yep. A little West cool game. there in Chicago on the north side. Well, last night, actually back to back games, but last night against Sean Doolittle, Josh Willingham almost. Uh, this would have been a two run home run, and he crushed it. He did not leave. He knew it was foul. And as Sean Doolittle told us, the positioning of the foul poles of two games have been just perfect for the A's. Didn't know you could move them, but I guess 
ball goes in front just enough. High fastball Willingham swings and misses side retired a run on two hits for the twins. A's come to bat in the bottom of the first. Going to the bottom of the first, here's the A's lineup. Coco Crisp in center, full to left, Donaldson at third. Moss at first, Norris will hit fifth and catch. Then it's Reddick and right, Lowry at short, vote to the H, Sogard, the second baseman. And the TBA for the Minnesota Twins, which is why it was listed for this game, happens to be Trevor May, who is called up from AAA to make his major league debut tonight against the Athletics in the third game of the series. And the right hander, 17 starts at AAA, eight and six record, sub three earn run average. Fastball, mid 90s. And a throw curveball sign, a change up. Of course, a couple of different fastballs that most pitchers have the two and four seams. So he has a run on the board before he faces his first battle. Quick look at the Twins defense. Willingham, Santana, Schaefer in the outfield. It's Plouffe, Escobar, Dozier, and Parmalee on the infield. So Coco Chris steps in. And Trevor May's first big league pitch is. A pop up foul, he may get it out, and Plouffe grabs it and he does get it out. So Trevor May has thrown a big league pitch and he's got a big league out. So Coco fouls out, one out. Another guy named Trevor made the play. And that ball is thrown out. And probably it's better that it was hit and caught and it's the out as they can uh, authenticate. His first pitch in the big leagues, which is exactly what they did, as you see where he grew up in Washington. But I never really liked to see a pitcher make his debut and throw one pitch and then throw the ball out. He may like that ball. He may have it rubbed <laughs> yeah. up just right. 0 and 1 to Sam Fold. And Fold rips one to right, and that's a hit. Schaefer's over there to grab it, and Fold will stay at first. So Sam Fold with a one out single. Well, the Twins were very happy to have Sam Fold. Not surprising that they picked him up whenever the A's had to uh, make the decision. And this is why, because he loves to play the game. He's uh, very aggressive as he jumped on a fastball. And he was thinking too, but Schaefer did a good job of cutting the ball off to keep Sam Fold at first. Rick Anderson was telling me that the Twins. And they pretty much said if they could have nine Sam Foles, they would be happy because that's how much they enjoyed having him on the Twins. Played hard, banged into the wall a few times, but uh, we know he's called Super Sam for a reason. Donaldson takes a fastball a bit inside. Donaldson hitting 245, 23 and 78. Six with a couple of walks in this series. A 
little bit more on Trevor May. The trade was Ben Revere. The Twins traded Ben Revere to the Phillies for Trevor May and Vance Worley. You know, Vance Worley did not work out in Minnesota, but now pitching very good for the Pirates. So the Twins get a couple of young arms back. The second one was Trevor May. And that was the trade was in December of 2012. So this is his second year in the Twins organization. And tonight is Major League debut. Well, Vance Worley pitched one against the A's in Philadelphia. He did, yeah. He had a couple good years and then arm trouble and Friday night game that uh, went to the last inning. Scored a 1 1 game, I think it was. In for strike one and two. So the Twins have high hopes for Trevor May. 24 years old. He's a big kid, 6'5. So a young pitcher, Kyle Gibson. And they have high hopes for him. So they got Nolasco signed long term. He's at the DL right now. Phil Hughes. So maybe next year the makings of a decent rotation. We'll see. Well, that's really the reason they extended Kurt Suzuki because they wanted a catcher, a veteran, to be able to handle those young pitchers. This year the Twins with the 12th highest ERA in the American League, 4.34. The A's are second. Sure, Kurt Suzuki will be catching Phil Hughes tomorrow. The day game after night game is usually. A day or a game in which the manager will have another catcher catch rather than the uh, everyday catcher because of the quick turnaround. Quick throw and fold his back. Here's your team ERA numbers. So the Blue Jays right behind. Donaldson lays off. Anna Ron does such a good job as a video coordinator for the athletics and compiling a, a scouting report on especially a young man that A's are seeing for the first time between video and the scouting report and it's kind of true to form what we're seeing a lot of fastballs thrown by this young man in the early going which should help hitters as long as he doesn't try to fool him with a 3 2 slider now. And Donaldson hooks it left field and it's fair up against the wall. Willingham hustles it back in and fold will stop at third. Hanging breaking ball and Josh Donaldson crushed it. And it's so hard that Mike Gallego usually very aggressive to send base runners. He had to hold him up but there's a hanging curveball pitch that is not thrown a lot by Trevor May. And that's usually the reason there why he does not because hanging it as he did three and two he did not fool Donaldson. Man did he hit her hard. Sam Ford saw it all the way was running hard thinking about scoring but shut down by Mike Gallego. So here's Moss. He's need to get Moss going he's now at 247 on the year. So a first inning run would be nice. It's been a while for the athletics. Got to go back to July 20th. 17 straight games without a run in the first inning, but a great opportunity here. Got a ground ball to the right side into the shift. Any ground ball except for the pitcher and maybe proof at third will net a run. See now this is a little bit of a different shift, Ray, because there are not three infielders on the right yeah. side. There's really the normal two. Now the shortstop who most of the time with Moss is playing on the right side of second base, but Escobar is playing actually just to the left of second base. And the outfield is straight away, and the outfield usually plays Moss toward left field. Interesting. In Santana and center playing a very shallow center yep. field for the power hitting Brandon Moss. Derek Norris is the on deck hitter as it's now 3 and 0. So Terry Steinbach give the sign to the catcher saying he's going to maybe swinging and that's just the, the movement at least think about it. First base is open so Brandon Moss if he does have the green light will be looking for a good pitch 3 and 0 if he gets it. 
And it was a bit high, and the bases are loaded. You know, when you're struggling, sometimes the best thing you can do is walk. That means you're seeing the pitches for a long time. And Brandon Moss, as he was talking about, he's struggling, but he said, I want to win so badly. He said, I, I want to try to help this club win because he wants to win. So Derek Norris will try to do it himself. So Norris with the bases loaded. He's down one nothing. Trying to bounce right back here in the bottom of the first. First pitch in there with a breaking ball. Norris terrific with runners in scoring position this year. 373 the average. Full Donaldson Moss are your runners. Missed inside. One or one to count. So Trevor May making his major league debut, but in trouble early. Swings and misses at an off speed pitch. A little bit off the plate. Looked like Derek Norris is on it all the way, but opened up just enough for the ball running away from him. Off speed as it was. So Norris behind in the count, one and two. Reddick to follow. Blocked by the catcher Eric Fryer. This is a game in which the A's left 18 on base. This was a ground ball up the middle, curveball off of the bat of Derek Norris. A game winner that walked off against the former closer of the Athletics, Brad Balfour. So two and two the count. Blocked again nicely by Fryer and now a full count. That was an emergency block. Good job by the young man. The previous one was a curveball. This one looked like it's supposed to be inside. Had to quickly backhand it to keep it from going past him. That was a curveball, so you would think he's going to get a fastball, something straight on three and two after missing with a two-two curveball. And it's low, and the A's have a run. So Norris gets the bases loaded walk. He gets an RBI, and we got a one-one game. So an early meeting. For Rick Anderson, the pitching coach. Single, double, and two walks. Thought he had the opportunity to ask Rick Anderson, the pitching coach, as the the music. Oh, that gets played a long time since the pitching coach is out now. Let's just listen. But Rick Anderson and I asked him he'd been with Ron Gardner since 2002 and I said you know the Minnesota Twins throw strikes because unfortunately for the young man he's walked two in this inning below the base is now to bring in run and, and Rick said the philosophy basically is throw the ball down the middle make the movement go side to side and not try to hit the corners all the time. This young man's just having problems even throwing it down the middle. Yeah, that's but how many a times, great spot to be your major league yeah. debut and you got the bases loaded. But how many times have we seen where pitchers try to go to the corners and keep missing? Waste of time. And especially with the movement that he said, here's the ball right down yeah. the middle, take it to either side, at least keep it in the strike zone. Especially when the bases are loaded. Exactly. 
And Reddick pops it up shallow left. Long run for Willingham. Still coming. He's going to get there. Donaldson's going to try it. The throw to the plate. Is it in time? It is. Fryer puts the tag on Donaldson. And nice throw by Willingham. And the A's get just the one. Close play. They're looking at it, talking about it in the dugout. Bob Melvin has not come out yet. And it doesn't look like he's going to. So let's take a look. There's the tag by Fryer. And that's how the inning ends. He's going to run. It's 1 1 after 1. At home plate by Willingham to end the bottom of the first, so the A's get the one to tie it. It'll be Parmalee, Escobar, and Fryer for the Twins against Samarja. Red Sox and the Angels. Are in the second inning. Albert Pujols has a two run double, so the Angels leading two to nothing in the second inning. Buck Buckholz for the Red Sox, Richards for the Angels. Oh, Buckholz has really struggled this year. Yeah. Unbelievable. He's always seems to be injured yeah. for parts of the season, but you're right. Garrett Richards has not struggled. No. He's 12 and 4 with a two point. 5 8 ERA, and he is the Angels' best starting pitcher. Right. Of course, he's exceeded his uh, number of innings pitched previously yeah. in a single season. That, see how that's going to work this uh, down the stretch, although he's going to get the opportunity to continue to pitch. And the Angels have lost four in a row, and they trail the A's by four games. The Mariners and the White Sox will get started very soon. No AC for the White Sox. Paxton, the young left hander for the Mariners. Seattle has won four in a row. Let's take another look at the play at the plate. It was a close play, but I think they got it. And a shallow fly ball as Willingham charged it nicely and set himself up and throw just a little bit to the inside of the plate. But as Donaldson tried to go around the tag by Fryer. There's the cutoff man. There's a throw, and actually Fryer made a nice play on a short hop, and then a diving effort to go get Josh Donaldson, which you know, we have seen runners try to score with one out, but this is pretty shallow. And Donaldson, I guess if his jumping ability was good, he could have jumped over. Yeah, the Fryer was quite a ways up yeah. the line. 
after two pitches it a fair ball knocked down by Moss throws to Samarja low and what a play by Samarja. That's a six foot five inch frame that has to bend down well running and concentrate on trying to catch the baseball and he did that is a heck of a play. It was a Sonny Gray did a slide into the bag. But Moss knocked the ball down ruled fair and well you're right to go down to his uh, kneecaps almost to catch a ball thrown by Moss and of course ideally and asking for a lot for Samarja to want the ball up the chest high sure that's where he ideally wanted it but as quickly as as quickly as Moss had to get to it watch Samarja looks like he blocks Parmley off from going at the bag Parmley is kind of stopped right there with his right foot for Samarja maybe Parmley realized this is wide receiver big guy yeah. to deal with him. So here's Eduardo Escobar. The runner has the right to go to the bag and go through the bag if necessary, but he did slow down. But great play by Samarja. Moss cannot pick this one. Escobar's fast. He's going to make the turn. He's going to try. Reddick's throw is just a touch offline, and Escobar has a double. So a hard hit ball. Moss tried to pick it, couldn't do it. Just <laughs> well, Vargas last night, and this one hit extremely hard, opposite side of the field. And if I say, well, why didn't he get in front of it? I don't know that he had a chance as hard as the ball was hit and hooking. Just put the glove down and hope that the ball finds the glove. So here's Eric Fryer. First pitch strike to Fryer. Two sixty-eight, a homer and three RBIs for Fryer. He's got eleven hits and forty-one at bats. A couple of doubles. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back breaking balls from Samarja. And you talked about the teaser earlier, the one that Plouffe got before he hit the base hit. This is the time you can go out a little bit farther. Looks like Fryer is susceptible to the sliders, and if so, see if he can chase another one. With a fastball that's very high. So one and two to Fryer. Three hits off Samarja so far in the game. That one bounced slowly up the middle. Lowry has it. And the throw, and Moss is able to keep his foot on the bag. And that's the second out with Escobar going to third. I remember last night, Lowry's first game back after hitting the ball or taking the ball off his right index finger. And that one almost looked like he threw it with his middle and ring finger instead of the index finger. Grimaced a little bit as he threw. It's a good sinker. Yeah. Nice play by Brandon Moss. So that'll bring up the ninth place hitter, Jordan Schaefer. Schaefer with the Twins, two for nine. Just joined the Twins earlier this month. Might have been the biggest out for the A's last night was a strikeout of Schaefer with a tying run aboard, scoring position in the five run seventh inning by the Twins. Kept it going, but scary evening. Did get a little weird. Yes. We talked about it in the A team, but just the fact that the A's were able to get out of that inning, still having the lead. And yeah. when you and when this team has the lead after seven innings, you feel pretty good. However, it got to that point, <laughs> you still feel pretty good. Bullpen with the new record. 28 and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings. So the bullpen is on a roll. Three and zero to Jordan Schaefer. And I think the A's are one of those teams. I don't think I know they are. And there's some out there where 
if you're the opposition, you need to get them yeah. in the first six innings because if you're trailing the A's and it becomes the bullpen, you're in big trouble. We saw that with yeah. the Kansas City Royals. They're yeah. the same way. You need to be. In the case of playing the Royals, you need to have the lead. That's, right. That's a great point. Otherwise, they may shut you down because their bullpen is good. Same thing when you're playing the Athletics. Especially with that unicorn backpack down there. Yep. Just in between Cook and uh, Doolittle. Just the thought of that happening. A lot of pitches for Samarja. He's been in trouble in both innings. 36 pitches, and now he faces Danny Santana. The leadoff man. The Twins as a team are eighth in the league in run scored. They're twelfth in the league in home runs. They walk a lot. In fact, these two teams are one and two in total walks. A's are one. Twins are two. Not a not a lot of home runs. Runner goes, and it's going to be a stolen base for Schaefer. And that was pure speed. Schaefer's fast. Yeah. And Derek Norris kind of faked and then looked to third. And normally you don't like to think about putting another runner in a scoring position, but at that point, I don't know that Derek Norris could have made a, any sort of a throw to get him out. Probably if he'd hurry, he might have taken a chance to bounce the ball. Fastball is high. One and one to Santana, who hit a fly ball to center field to open up the ball game. Good pitch. Breaking ball caught the outside corner. Hitters never like that pitch. They don't think it's a strike. It's a great pitcher's pitch. Well, it's a backdoor slider, and that's a good one. And it's a question with a splitter if he throws a split. Eric Norris is a very good at blocking balls in the dirt. That one tomahawk foul. Well, the twins are making some Arja work. Uh, Backdoor slider for a strike, then a fastball up and in. So he can go. Slider down and in, slider back door. Looked like Derek Norris is calling something outside. That one slapped down the ground to Sogard, and Samarja is going to get out of it. So the Twins strand a pair. Bottom of the second coming up. It's a 1 1 game.
Damon Ray. A nice moment before the game. National Baseball Hall of Fame inductee Tony La Russa. Manager of the athletics, of course, Chicago prior to that, his wife Elaine, as there is the plaque or the bust that uh, was presented to Tony at the induction. Terry Steinbach, his catcher in 1987. But Tony took over his first full year managing the athletics. Tiny, of course, in town as a bench coach for Ron Gardner of the Twins, the familiar number 36, catching the ceremonial first pitch from now Hall of Famer Tony Rosa, number three all time in wins. And very good company, but only 35 shy of number two. John McGraw, but he decided to retire. And now a new position created for him at Arizona Diamondbacks. Still in baseball. It's nice to see Tony yep. in this ballpark. And that one's hit high in the air to right, but playable for Jordan Schaefer. And Schaefer makes the catch. Lowry's retired. You might remember Terry Steinbach when uh, he first joined the club. He was a third baseman originally, became a very, very good catcher. And a lot of home runs for the Athletics. He's 86, of course, he. Join the club. Tony's first full year was 87. He came about halfway through, but Terry Steinbach, an all star, was catch of the world champion 89 team, and then went back to finish his career with the Minnesota Twins growing up in New Ulm, very close to the Twin Cities. But Steinbach made it bad for a lot of catchers because he could not only catch, but he get home runs. And you get an offensive catcher, a catcher who is very good that can swing the bat well. That puts a lot of pressure on future catchers. I think Bench and Munson and Fisk, those guys kind of started it, Barra. But Terry Steinbach was outstanding. Quick feet, throwing out base runners. A lot of that maybe because he played third base, but he could do the job. Hit a home run his first major to get that. All good things for Steinbach. So would you say when when you get to the big leagues as a player, a, a, a catcher with Above average offensive skills was a major oh, oh. plus because absolutely really okay Be because at, at a time remember there the defense they always talk about strength up the middle catching yeah. short second center of course a good pitching staff your offense is first third right and left on the corners but when you add offense to a position where you already have a good catcher defensively man that's a tremendous bonus mm -hmm. vote pops a foul back. And even Mike Sosha talked about his catchers, Jeff Mathis. There is Stein, of course, the 88 All Star MVP, had a home run off Doc Gooden. But uh, big year, of course, a couple of no hitters. Milton with the Twins, Dave Stewart, Toronto against the Blue Jays. Shallow center, it's going to be Santana coming in. He's got it. And our McDonald's True Stories tonight is a little bit more on. Terry Steinbach, let's check him out in action. Like to look at the old video. Yeah, the good stuff with the athletics. He was terrific. And as Ray said, went to the Twins for the final two years of his career, 97 and 98. But the A's is where he clearly had his best seasons, no doubt about that. And now his second year as the bench coach for the Twins. Well, I want to say his last at bat as a member of the athletics was here. Hit a home run, which gave him. <laughs> Over 100 RBIs and I don't know 30 some odd home runs or whatever. Don't know exact numbers offhand. He knows them, but he walked in, hit the home run, shook hands, took his scared, left. See you later. That's good. And that's it. But what a way to finish. But great person and uh, of course a site that will always be familiar in the Steinbach family, and that is at the 89 earthquake, and the unfortunate earthquake in San Francisco for Game Three, and his wife Marion. Sign. He says now his kids. Talk about their mother because evidently National Geographic they talk about California. They show Mary Steinbach. Yeah, she was not doing good. <laughs> so a lot of people felt bad yeah. for her. She was yeah. scared to death. Yeah. So thank you to her 35th home run 35 home runs and 100th run batted in in the same swing in his last swing and that was it. Time to go. Time to go and get back home. So guard with a walk. So that's the third walk issued by Trevor May. One thing Terry Steinbach said, of course, had uh, two children. He said, as long as the children are home, I'm going to dabble in baseball. I'll say in it's spring training, but 
had an opportunity to stay home with the family. He said once they're off to college, then get back in baseball. And they offered him the bench coach job for Ron Garden hire, and he gladly took it. So not surprised to see that. Good baseball man. So to the top of the order in Coco Chris. Both starting pitchers a lot of pitches early. Trevor May has 33. Coco fouled out on the first pitch he saw from Trevor May in the first inning. That's not the A's collected six walks three came around to score and that's always a plus when you have a pitcher give up the bases on balls you'd like to see them score first inning one scored on the bases loaded walk. Good pitch there right on the outside corner. Teams with run in the first inning. Missed again, two and one. Outfield straight away for Coco. Ploof the third baseman right on the edge of the grass. Should the young man making his major league debut, his family and friends here flying in to watch him make his debut. And of course, his goal is to give him a chance to see him pitch for a while. Yep. Don't want to have to exit too early. Maybe after the first inning, thought maybe it was going to be a real short night. And now it's three and one. So Coco sitting on a hitter's count. And he misses outside. Back to back, two out walks. I have to always think about uh, whether it's a hitter comes to the big leagues, make his debut, or a pitcher. Hitters, of course, have great plays made against them, but maybe they don't have at the AAA or AA level. And I have to also wonder about a pitcher. Maybe some pitches that he makes. Hey, guys usually swing at those, but not sure. up here. And, and that's one of the biggest difference. The defense is great. Hitters are a little bit more selective, and you have to throw strikes. And they will not help you out in most cases. At least the A's we have seen will not. So here's Sam Full looking for a two out hit. First pitch to Full misses outside. Wouldn't say he's missing by a lot. But Off speed pitch that doesn't work, and now it's 2 0. Pitch count at 40. And that's after two fly ball outs to start the inning on seven pitches, and now he's walked a couple. That is not a good ratio, folks. Missed again. What happens? You start missing, and then you start thinking, "I just want to throw a strike," and that's when a hitter jumps all over it. Fold might not be doing it with a 3-0 count. He also knows that Donaldson's waiting in the on-deck circle, and he's already hit a 3-2 hanging curveball. And that's not close. Three straight walks with two outs, and the A's have the bases loaded again. 
So Donison will hit, but not before the meeting comes to an end. Donaldson, as Ray said, a line drive double in the first inning. Pep and the Rick Anderson's bio and immediate guy, major league team pitching leader since 2002 when he took over. Fewest walks, Minnesota Twins. 5,054. And the next closest of Cardinals at 57 19. But that's early in his tenure as the pitching coach of the Twins. They had some good pitchers, and now it's trying to get the youngsters to. Duplicate what the pitchers of a few years ago did for the Twins. First pitch to Donaldson is hit into left field, and that's a base hit. One run scores. Here comes Coco. He will score, and the A's lead three to one. Now maybe he thought he was going to try to use something other than the fastball, which he had trouble throwing for strikes. And Donaldson again getting a breaking ball, a not very good breaking ball, similar to the one that Donaldson crushed down the left field line for a double. This just passed the diving proof. And with two outs, all the runners on the move and speed able to score easily. So fortunately in this inning, um, three walks so far, two have scored thanks to the big hit by Donaldson. So here's Moss. Donaldson now with 80 RBIs. Another breaking ball, of course, the timing with the leg kick and just hammer the ball through the infield, and fortunately, just to the left of Ploof. Call for a strike by Pat Holberg, the home plate umpire. That's a gift. Did not have to be. And the pitcher struggling. The last thing you expect is for an umpire to help him, and definitely helped him on that one. And Brandon Moss said, No way. Fold that second Donaldson at first. Another strike called, and it's one and two. That one on the inside yeah. corner. Had better heights on it, which uh, nothing to complain about with that one. Went inside again, just missed. Forty seven pitches by May, and we're in the second inning. That one foul back. And the ball swung hard on a change up two and two, and just fortunately hit it off the end of the bat, cued it back behind him. Three and two runners will be on the move. So twenty eight pitches this inning, forty nine in the game. Runners go and the pitch is fouled straight back. Tough chore hitting when a 3 2 and your pitcher is having trouble throwing strikes. And 
you want to be disciplined enough to, and not swing at a bad pitch and help the pitcher but you also want to be aggressive if you get a pitch look like Brandon might have gone out of the strike zone just a bit and fouled it back. Another 3 2 and a good swing there by Moss. So we'll do the full count again with Folden Donaldson ready to take off. Here's the pitch and it's popped up and that'll be into the seats. So Moss and Trevor May into a good battle here. Tenth pitch in the at bat coming up. Runners go. Pitch is high. Another walk. That's four walks in this inning. Six walks in the game. And just looking at the numbers at AAA this year, three times he walked four in a game. He walked four this inning, yeah. like you said. And, and I would think that Rick Anderson, who's pacing, and Ron Gardner, the manager's pacing. Has to be concerned about a pitch being thrown to one of these hitters that's going to be grooved down the middle and they're going to unload. Donaldson did on the hanging curveball first pitch. Norris very capable of driving the ball. Second time for him with the bases loaded that he's hit, this time with two outs. First pitch to Norris, down and away with a breaking ball, 1 0. So there is action now in the Twins bullpen. Sam Deduno is up and getting loose. Not close, and it's 2 0. Oh. So we'll. Have a pitcher catcher meeting this time. And the fryer for him has blocked three now with the runner at third base. Balls in the dirt. Fryer's done a good job blocking them, actually catching a couple of them. This with two outs. Yep. Four walks and a two run single with two outs. Three oh pitch is in for a strike. So three and one the count. Full Donaldson Moss the runners. And the fastball is high. And Norris is going to get another RBI with the bases loaded walk. And now it's four to one. So seven walks in the game by Trevor May. So five walks in this inning, seven in the game. And here's Reddick. 
Reddick swings and misses at the first pitch. Might have been a little bit outside too, but he was looking fastball, got it, tried to expand his own, swung right through it. So ninth man to bat in the inning. They're in the top of the fourth inning in Anaheim. Angels still leading the Red Sox two to nothing. Foul straight back. One and two. Well, a grand slam single would be great here, wouldn't it? <laughs> Take another base is loaded walk. <laughs> So three runs in for the athletics. One two pitch nice block by Fryer that one bounced well out in front of home plate. It's almost every time Fryer calls a breaking pitch he anticipates having to do what he's done successfully four times now and that's block he's. He's got a good teacher and Kurt Suzuki looks very good behind the plate and Fryer's matching him tonight and. What a chore it's been for him tonight, trying to get his pitcher to throw strikes. Reddick gets it hard towards second. Dozier has it. Side retired. So the A's get three runs. Thanks mostly to the walks. So four to one, the A's lead after two. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is now available. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out-of-market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit athletics.com for details. Busy, busy night. And the souvenir stand because Kite first inning has taken over an hour. <laughs> so they got a lot of time to sell a lot of goodies tonight. At least first inning. See, That's fan, true. Yeah, fans could go buy something and say, I'm not really missing anything. <laughs> I can buy it and go back to my seat. Right, the cash registers are <laughs> clicking when there's a lot of walks. Yeah. <laughs> so four to one, the A's lead, one in the first, three in the second. One and one to Dozier. Dozier, Ploof, Vargas here in the third inning. Duduno is still warming up, and that makes you wonder Ray, if yeah. the young man is done. I, I don't know. We'll see. I'm 
Well, you could take a picture of that. Yep. Rick Anderson, the veteran pitching coach, with the young man making his major league debut. And then look on the other side, see Kurt Young, and see the starters and the bullpen he's got. And, you know, he worked at it. And you hope to get a staff like that. But Rick Anderson has had good staffs in the past that have pitched well. Unfortunately, not for that young man. All of it happened in the second inning with two outs, and he walked everybody. Two pitches to the backstop. Full count. Dozier doubled and scored in the first inning. Another time the A's batted around. 25th time. They've sent at least nine men to the plate, most of the majors. And that one very close but low, and it's a leadoff walk. That's the second walk by Samarja. Could be one of those nights, huh, Ray? Where yeah. nothing's easy. Uh, he walked Schaefer last inning, ended up stealing the base, and that Santana with the ground ball to get out of a second and third and two outs. Think about Samarja and his six starts prior to tonight. Three times he's been double figures in ground ball outs, which ideally is the way you want to pitch. It falls on the ground. You get some double plays. Worst case, you get big outs. It's runners on base. Kloof had the RBI hit in the first. This is outside. So this would be pitch number 50 coming up for Samarja. So he's worked hard tonight in the early going. Can't remember when uh, the A's were playing the Astros and Chris Carter was taking some of the sliders thrown by Luke Gregerson. Looks kind of the same way. Looks like he starts but recognizes the pitch and does not offer at a lot of pitches out of the strike zone. Well, especially against Gregerson where you see yeah. a lot of guys swing and miss at that pitch. Which is good for Plouf because it happened to him in his first at bat. Took the slider outside and hit the fastball in with that slightly open stand. Dozier runs, throw to second base is off of Sogard's glove, and it rolls into very shallow right field. Dozier will try for third, and he will make it. Well, the ball just rolled away far enough that Dozier, even though he and a stayed at second base just for a little bit, but he was able to get up and get to third. And this might uh, unfortunately go to Eric Silgar. Look like he tried to make the quick tag, and in doing so, really never cleanly had the ball in his glove. Watch a quick right there. Yeah, and he's going to get the air as the the throw was there, and as he tried to make the quick tag, hit the backside of Dozier sliding, and actually off the glove. Never really had it, but more than anything, trying to make the quick tag without the baseball in his glove. So the count two and one. Good one there, two and two. So indeed, a stolen base, E4. Second air in the series by the Athletics. Their 75th air this year. Two two pitch. It jammed and loops it foul, and a fan in the first row reached over and made a nice play. See the hoods are up tonight. Yes, Told are. you it was chilly tonight. Just ask Joe. Joe who? Joe, we got a three-man booth tonight. <laughs> Joe McCarthy, our very fine stage manager. See, there's another slider. They wouldn't bite at it. Almost like to take a chance to throw it three and two, see if it would uh, be aggressive in swing at a pitch that maybe is off the plate. He's thrown more sliders tonight. Yeah. And unfortunately, in this case, this guy's not swinging it. And a ah. fastball, and he threw it by him. And that's a big strikeout. Difference there, guy. If he went outside with a fastball, unlike the two and two fastball, watch the, the midsection, the ploof. He's opening there and sees the ball outside, realizes it's a strike, but it already committed to open and maybe Everybody thinking he's going to get a fastball back inside. And that's great fastball. Great location and the velocity was the best.
So here's Kenny Vargas. Outside to Vargas, who reached on a fielder's choice in the first inning. Just the eighth big league game for Vargas. And that hit him in the hand. So he will trot to first base, hit by pitch. Make that ball just cut a little bit right yeah. in. That's the lower hand, the right hand, got him right in the end, the wrist. Right there. So Samarja, the tenth time he has hit a batter this year. And now he faces Willingham, runners at the corners. A good double play candidate is Willingham. And he hits this one toward Sogard, who backs up. Dozier's tagging, and Dozier's going to bluff. And that's all, as it just was not far enough. Sogard gets it in quickly, and that's the second out. Well, there's two huge outs they get. Plus striking him out, keeping a run third, and then a pop up by another power hitter in Willingham. You see the second baseman going back. That's why Dozier quickly went back to tag, but Sogar with a strong arm and accurate got rid of it quickly. So you see an infielder backpedaling a little bit, and your runner at third. You know it's a little bit difficult to catch up and throw, but Sogar did it nicely. So here's Parmalee. Samarja trying to get out of a jam. First pitch is a strike outside corner. Parmalee was robbed of a hit by both Moss and Samarja. Moss made a nice play behind first, and Samarja made a nice play to catch the throw from Moss. And now it's 0 and 2. Derek Norris with the ball to the left side of the helmet of the mask. Welcome to catching. He's got the good mask, though, a lot of padding, and that's always important. And of course, the steel bars are important instead of the, the lighter metal, titanium. You want as much protection as possible. 0 2 pitch popped up. Looks like Samarja is going to get out of it. So a great opportunity by the Twins, but they cannot cash in. Samarja does his thing, and the A's hang on to a four to one lead as we go to the bottom of the third.
On Saturday, August the 23rd, join us after the 6.05 p.m. game against the Angels for Disney Pixar's The Incredibles fireworks show presented by Chevron. You can celebrate the blockbuster hit by watching the fireworks from the outfield grass, but as always, on-field capacity is limited. Get your tickets today or now at athletics.com slash fireworks. Should be another great fireworks, and that would be right after a great game against the Angels on a Saturday night. A big weekend of baseball against the Angels of Anaheim. Who are still leading. Two to nothing. Bottom of the fourth. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and repair experts. It's Sam Daduno. Daduno has made eight starts this year. And this is his 17th appearance out of the bullpen. So... Trevor May's major league debut. He goes two innings, and the big number, of course, is the walks. Seven. Seven walks, no strikeouts. Well, you could say in his major league debut, only gave up three hits. That's right. And silver lining someplace. <laughs> Unfortunately, that might be it. The two innings, not very good. Three hits, not bad, but seven walks, definitely not good. And last inning. That's what he's got to be thinking about. He's got a chance to pitch deeper in the game, but first two quick outs, but then walk five after getting the first two outs in the inning. And then the guy you bring in, a four pitch walk to Lowry, and the first batter he faces. Eight walks by the Twins tonight. So 63 pitches total for Trevor May. So that'll bring up vote. Well, you know, when the starter comes out after two innings, you know who's going to be coming out of the bullpen. It's going to be a long man and try to give some innings. And good bullpens have the back end. The A's are fortunate to have a complete bullpen of everybody is good, no matter who comes in. And usually, very rare, the A's bullpen uh, relief pitcher comes in before the fifth inning. Vote takes a strike in the inside corner. So Sam Daduno. Gonna need to eat up some innings for Ron Gardenhire tonight. Vote slashes one foul. So one and two the count. Mariners leading the White Sox one to nothing in the fifth inning. Good curveball by Deduno and he gets the strikeout of Steven Vogt. So that's out number one here in the third. Good sharp breaking ball and disappeared out of sight. A good strikeout. Got this young man in the series in Minneapolis early in the season. First time he pitched on the seventh, he was three and a third innings, second time three innings. So he has been able to give some innings for his manager, pitching coach. Quality innings, gave up just a total of four hits and a couple of runs in those seven and a third. Or six and a third. So he faces Sogard, who got that inning started, last inning started, with the two out walk. And after that, Crisp walked, Fold walked, Donaldson a two run single, Moss walked, Norris walked. And it's 2 0. Sogard, a hot hitter as of late. Good pitch there by Daduno.
and now three and one. One thing the catcher Fryer is going to be able to do. I think Kurt Suzuki maybe knew when to take the day off because <laughs> the better Kurt's catch. smarter than everybody. <laughs> He's going to get the chance to watch and wonder could I have changed anything? Who knows? But get the series finale tomorrow. The one thing Fryer gets to do tonight is talk to everybody and tell them exactly how the pitchers are pitching because he's he's catching a lot tonight. He's receiving a lot of the pitches. Getting his work in blocking balls in the dirt. And now full count so. One away see if Lowry maybe takes off. Lowry's got a pretty good lead. He does run, and the ball is hooked foul. So we're well out in front of that one. Runs again, and the pitch is outside, and it's another walk. Make it nine walks in the ball game by Twins pitchers. My uh, recollection of the one pitcher who walked ten batters, Jim Abbott, no. not one scored. That's a one I'll never forget. <laughs> How could you walk ten batters? That's pretty close to being impossible. And not have one walk in that or score, and that's what happened. At least tonight the A's five in the second inning, three score. It's almost impossible to walk nine in yeah. three innings. Almost. Still only one out here is Coco Crisp. First pitch curve for a strike. And for a pet Holberg home by his umpire, I've been behind the plate at times when something's close and you say it's a strike. He said, I don't know, I've been so accustomed to calling everything ball. I, I didn't know how to do that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so you either as an umpire say, I'm gonna stay on my game or you start feeling a little sorry, you know, you're gonna make close pitches and maybe it could go either way, getting strikes. That's a long night for the home plate umpire as well. Coco went around. I would not say that there's been a lot of close no. pitches <laughs> no. that could have went no. the twins way. No, you're right. But I think from a hitter standpoint, you want to know that the pitch is going to be around the strike zone because it gives you that, that comfortable feeling, although you don't know what's going to be thrown, different types of pitches, but at least you figure a pitch is going to be at least close to the plate. Two pitch in the dirt, blocked nicely by Fryer, who's had his hands full early in this game, and he's done a pretty good job. Well, technique is outstanding. He has had a lot of work on it tonight, and you know, again, true sense of blocking. He does not use his glove; he uses his body to soften the blow, anticipating very nicely pitches in the dirt to block them. Set up similar to the veteran Latroy Hawkins, who yep. seems to be on the move again, but a very, very good veteran relief pitcher. Coco rolls that one foul, that one running in on him. So the count one and two to Coco, who is fouled out and then walked and scored last inning. There's New Jersey Governor Chris Christie right behind the A's dugout sporting the A's green and gold enjoying the ball game tonight. So welcome to the Coliseum. The governor of New Jersey. 
breaking ball and Coco swings over top. Two outs. I think the governor be a little bit more pay more attention. You have a left handed hitter in their third base dugout. The slate swings can head right in your direction. So if you got your head turned back against the hitter, I know Coco with a breaking ball swinging over the top. So two outs for Sam Fold. Fold singled and scored in the first, walked and scored in the second. Good night for Sam Fold. And it's early. It's only the bottom of the third. <laughs> I was just thinking, he's on pace to have nine at bats yeah. tonight. 2 0. Oh. Well, May threw 63 pitches. Deduno has thrown 22. So 85 pitches thrown, and there's two outs in the third inning. So two walks, two strikeouts. So I figure <laughs> this would be a walk. At Hope Donaldson can hit another breaking ball if he gets it. Coco has made two outs in this game and first three innings, three at bats. Meanwhile, Fold and Donaldson, perfect. Moss with a couple of walks. Morris with a couple of walks. A whole bunch of walks. And Sogard out of the runners, and that was hit hard, but just foul down the first baseline. So the count even at two and two. Last time, Fold about, of course, his bunting technique, which is good, and he said he's always peeking at the third baseman, first baseman. This is not necessarily a bunting opportunity here, but he said he's always looking around to see where they're positioned. If he wants to lay one down again with two outs, he wants to try to drive the ball and drive the runner in. Parmalee has it. He'll underhand to Deduno outside, retired A strand two. We're headed to the fourth. It's the A's four, it's the Twins one. To you by Frost Brood Coors Light. Consecutive wins versus one team in Oakland A's history. Yankees. You remember that, I right? Remember the Yankees? That that was hard to understand how it could happen, but 16 in a row. It was 89, 91 World Championship and 89 American League Championship and 90. 
Remember the Mariners? Yeah. The Mariners could not That's beat right. the A's. Yeah. And I think I think it was almost all in one year, exactly. was it not? Absolutely. 2006. It was all in one year. As a matter of fact, the A's clinched the division against the Mariners that same 26 uh, 2006 in Seattle. Escobar is retired. I remember correctly in Seattle when the A's were getting ready to clinch. They were sitting on the clinch and they gave they, they lost the game in the ninth inning and they had to wait mm -hmm. to the next night to clinch. It was pretty much inevitable that it was going to happen at some point. Here's Fryer with one out. Samarja pumps a fastball in their first strike. Four to one, the A's lead, top of the fourth inning. Schaefer to follow. And there's a strike, and it's 0 2. Now somebody else had to wait, and that was the Cubs. Can you imagine it's been 26 years since they played their official night game? Install the lines of Wrigley Field. Oh, 26 sorry. years. First one got rained out. Rained right? out by the Mets and the Cubs. So that was by August the 9th of 1988. Reddick should get there and he will. Two outs. Imagine all those years at Wrigley Field have been there without lights and then all of a sudden they're lights. And then playing night games. Yeah. And then it rained and, and it you rained know everybody was saying. Hey, well, that's what happens. Should have never put lights in. <laughs> yeah, they could have played in the afternoon and had the game. Right. The Wrigley gods were. <laughs> I thought telling. it was a goat. <laughs> Here's Schaefer with two outs. Well, Samarja would love to have a three up, three down inning. He has been in a lot of trouble the first three innings. Schaefer swung at a ball, fouls it. Schaefer walked and stole the base in the second he was stranded. And he tries to bunt the pitches inside. And Schaefer, watch him pull the bat back just in time, too. Frank Gentry did that down in Texas, the ball hitting in the knuckles, put him on the disabled <laughs> list. And he said he'd actually gone after the pitch. Moss has it. He'll take it himself. So Samarja gets the three up, three down inning. Needed just eight pitches. Bottom of the fourth coming up. It's the A's four and the Twins one.
Game this season, the A's are selling authentic game used and autographed memorabilia behind Section 120 at the Coliseum. Items include autographed baseballs and jerseys, game used helmets, bats, balls, and bases, lineup cards, and more. All items are authenticated under the MLB authentication program. A portion of the proceeds will benefit the Oakland A's community fund. So Donaldson to lead it off. Donaldson, Moss, and Norris here in the fourth inning. These three guys have not been retired tonight. That man would, uh, well, he's given a few autographs right now. Tony Russo, his manager, 788 wins. I'm sure he's going to be busy tonight sitting in his seat and they're lining up. And in all honesty, that's almost not fair. Yeah. Yeah, to the people I around mean, him in addition to, to everybody. Him. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the poor guy, yeah. he probably just wants to watch the game, but so does the people around him, and they're just lining up. And once they start lining up, they're not going to stop. Yeah. And I'm just thinking that uh, the memorabilia, Tony La Russa, of course, they have the lineup card that's in the dugout that shows both lineups and the extra players. Tony would, if somebody hit a home run, of course, he, he, I think he got every lineup card autographed by somebody. That's great. You know, and, and he collected a lot of the stuff. It's very instrumental in the art program and mm -hmm. the Animal Rescue Foundation. And, but. All right, good. He's catching a break. There it is. Some of this is Animal Rescue Foundation. He's been doing that for a long time. Oh, I got a bobblehead, and I'm pretty happy about it. Hall of Famer, man. <laughs> Tuck those Hall of Fame bobbleheads away. <laughs> Make sure they... Kids get a hold of them, all of a sudden the head is gone. <laughs> <laughs> and if a bobblehead without a head is really... But see, nothing when the, but a bobble. When the kid <laughs> with a bobble, see the kids ain't dead. There's something wrong with his head. It keeps bobbing up and I down. Know, it's like, so well, they yeah, rip it yeah, off. Yeah, <laughs> it may just happen to some of the bobbleheads I got. So two outs here in the fourth inning. So here's Norris. Interesting night for Norris. He's had a pair of bases loaded walks. He'll take it. A couple of RBIs. He's got 44 RBIs on the year. So, like Samarja, I'm sure Sam Danuno would love to have a three up, three down in. He's with three hits in the game. Each team with three hits. And you think it'd be a quick, low scoring game yeah. after just team, both teams' three hits. Nine walks received <laughs> by the A's, and I got three of them scoring. That's right. Oh. Strike call. It didn't have to be. Two and one the count. Sixth inning now in Anaheim, still two nothing Angels over the Red Sox, and looks like Garrett Richards is once again pitching a good one for the Angels. A shot right to the shortstop Escobar, a double clutch, plenty of time. Side retired, three ground ball outs, and we are on to the fifth inning from the Coliseum. It's the A's four and the Twins one.
Ace Baseball and Comcast Sports Set California is brought to you by Play Flag Football. Register your child today at PlayFlagFootball.com. Four to one, the A's lead the Twins. It's the top of the fifth inning. The A's have won four of their last five. They're 71 and 44. They got a four game lead over the Angels in the West. It's been a good homestand for the Athletics. They're five and three on this homestand with tonight and tomorrow. Finish up and then the A's will head on the road. The first stop will be Kansas City Ray and how about the Royals the Royals shut out the Giants today five to nothing and right now Kansas City's the hottest team in baseball. Yeah. They have won six in a row. The Tigers lost so the Royals are just a game and a half back in the central and the A's will go into Kansas City for a four game series starting Monday night. So that will that'll be a tough series. Yeah, it is. It will be and of course you see four of their five starters. And I would say Mr. Ventura is probably the Monday. Yep. Oh. He's a flamethrower. No. And that is fair. Right over the bag. And Santana will head into second and he'll stop at second with a leadoff double. Now Brandon Moss made a great play earlier on the Parmalee ground ball, but this one over the bag could not get to it and Number two. Maybe a little Ryan surprise Dozier. that it was called fair. Of course, when it went over the bag, partially, but then when it hits the foul or the uh, the chalk line, you know it hit part of the the bag someplace. But Moss just could not get to it. So hit number four against Samarja, and here's Dozier, a double and a walk. Curve just a bit outside. So yes, yeah, so the A's and the Royals. All of a sudden, that becomes a huge series. You said the Royals just a game and a half out in the Central, and they are also sitting with a hold on the second wild card. So they are in a decent position with well, still quite a bit of time left. But they're playing great baseball, continue to get great pitching, and the wild card is close. See, so the Yankees lost, the Blue Jays won, the Mariners are playing right now. So, right now, Angels Royals own the two wild card spots. But it's going to be a fun September. Well, there's speculation by some of the experts that when the Kansas City Royals had overtaken the Tigers' half game lead, then they started losing. They said, well, they're not going to come back. Well, they have come back. Yeah. They know they have good pitching, and they know it's been a while since they've been in postseason. And that's when Eric Hosmer, who was placed on the disabled list, probably going to miss about a month. They figured with his gold glove first baseman uh, playing first, and as well as his his offense, they would be missed. But they're still winning. And a three-one slider inside corner, three and two, with Trevor Plouffe in the on-deck circle. Well, James Shields pitched today, so maybe Thursday, huh? Yeah, he would get the Thursday finale, yeah. Guthrie's going to be in there. Tap slowly. Samarja, bare hands, a little juggle, throws in time and a close play. Twins will make a decision on this. It was very close. Lance Barrett is the first place umpire. Uh, you can see uh, Terry Steinbach immediately go to the dugout, and that would be on the phone. So Marja barehanded the ball, strong arm, and lost. has got a nice stretch, very close play, and the key here is that he was called out, and he was. He jumped to the bag, worst thing he could do, and I think by jumping at the bag, went airborne, did not get to the bag as quickly as he would running through, and see him right there. I think he's out. He's out. Remember what Chu of Texas did the same thing, hit the bag exactly the same way and injured his leg. That one looks a little closer, yeah. but. But how many times do we see when the runner jumps to the back? And maybe the stride takes him that way, but by jumping, just imagine you, you can't pick up any speed if you're airborne. And 
And Terry Steinbach. That's why Steinbach went to the phone. So thank you. Call back again when you have more time. Meanwhile, Samarja with a very good play. So Santana now at third with one out. And Ploof fouls it back. Ploof an RBI single and a strikeout so far tonight. And now it's 0 2, so Samarji can go for the strikeout. Samarja <laughs> reached back a little bit that time. A lot of pitches early for Samarja, including 23 in the second inning. He's sitting at 80 right now. High fastball foul back. Infielders are all back except Donaldson, who's well, he's in a little bit, but still behind the bag. So Ploof, if he puts it in play, he's got a pretty good chance to knock in a run. It's a good backhand stop by Derek Norris. Not necessarily a block, but a catch with the backhand and. Always important with the runner at third, give the pitcher a lot of confidence to throw anything anywhere. Missed again outside, three and two. Kenny Vargas is in the on deck circle. Payoff pitch coming up to Pluth. And it's bounced to shortstop. Lowry has it. Run comes in to score, so Pluth will get his second RBI of the ball game. So he needed to put it in play, and he did. And now it's four to two. And Samarja did throw him a slider, but it wasn't the sharp chase slider to the outside part of the plate. Instead, more towards the middle. And just enough for him to do exactly what he wanted. That's to make contact. It was Santana getting down the line, even though the ball was hit hard. They were not going to try at the plate, but sometimes with a hard hit ball, there is that at least thought consideration of going to the plate. But Santana took care of that. So this is Kenny Vargas, who has reached on a fielder's choice and been hit by a pitch. So Vargas two for eight in the series. Big swing hits it high and foul. Kenny Vargas said. Don't call me Kenny's. Unless my mother's listening from Puerto Rico. She gave him that name and put the S on the end. You think she's listening? Uh, no, All not right. to our telecast. So we can go with we Kenny. Can go with Kenny. He I said, like Kenny call Vargas. He said, it's call a good me, name. Yeah, call me Kenny. Don't call me Kenny's. Right. It's like Kendry's Morales. And just foul Moss tried to get to it in fair territory couldn't quite do it but as big as he is if he says call me Kenny we'll call him Kenny yep that ball just trickled in front of the bank Moss tried to get it get an easy out but just had the top spin took it foul so one and two a run in here for the Twins in the fifth. Reaches for it, stays alive. Tony Olivo, many think that if he had not had knee problems, he could have been in Cooperstown. Still works for the Twins in uniform. He's got to be thrilled to see this young man 
the power that he has. Tony Olivo is a five tool player with power. My left hand hitter, this kid is a switch hitter, but I would think that Tony has to be really excited to see this young man with a bat in his hand. Well, the Twins have a very good minor league yeah. system. They have a couple of the top prospect, top 10 prospects in all of baseball that are not quite ready for the big leagues yet, but they will be soon. Byron Buxton, Miguel yeah. Sano. You'll hear their names soon. Donaldson with the shift on charges throws quickly and it's going to be a base runner for the twins. The ball was in the dirt. Moss could not pick it. Donaldson was playing the shift and he was, he was playing back quite a bit. What? Air five. You see where he was coming from. I know that's. Wow. That's a brutal call. I mean, Josh Donaldson's had some errors, but you can't play deep at shortstop. Wow. Yeah, I was just impressed that the big guy was able to get down the line as quickly as he did. Yeah, this is not David Ortiz running. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. So E5. That's that's bad call. I'm sorry. And I'm sure the official score, whoever is going to say, well, you know, the Moss comes up with it. Yeah, but what did Donald's have to do to make the play? So well, that's the second error in the game by the Athletics. I'm going to leave it as a hit. I, I don't blame you. 0 oh 2 to Willingham, who has struck out and popped out. And Willingham signed that three year contract to leave the A's and signed with the Twins. So that contract is up after this year. High fastball Willingham swings and misses side retired. So a run for the twins bottom of the fifth coming up A's four wins two. The Oakland A's and GovX present Salute to Service Sundays this season at each Sunday home game. That means tomorrow veterans, active duty, and first responder personnel can purchase tickets at a discounted price. They will receive a $7 off Plaza level tickets and $5 off Plaza Reserve tickets to all 13 Sunday home games. Visit athletics.com slash military for more information and tickets. Tomorrow is Sunday. And not a lot of Sundays left in the regular season, so take advantage of the GovX promotion tomorrow. Here's Reddick leading it off against Sam Deduno, who's into his third inning of relief work. First time Reddick tonight has come up without runners on base. In at the first, in at the second. Whoa. 
pitch there two and one. Angels batting in the bottom of the six still leading two to nothing Ray and. Garrett Richards has a no hitter in that really? game. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a base hit by Reddick. Nicely done. So Reddick's going to have a base hit. That is a great bunt, and it's leading off an inning. Got the shift, take the bunt, take the base hit. And really, he just pushed the ball. He stayed back and didn't really try to hurry. Actually, he's making the turn like he's going to go for two. But a great job. Just make sure you put the ball in play in fair territory because at that point, it's going to be a base hit. Nobody except the third baseman to the left side of the infield. And while you could say, you know, Josh hit 38, uh, 32 home runs in 2012, eight this year, but he is more. Of a line drive hitter now. And if you're going to give him a base hit and a bunt leading off an inning with a shift, he's going to take it. So hit number four for the Athletics. Lowry has walked and hit a fly ball to right field. Roll foul. Ty Waller. And he had it for a moment. There's that laugh. I love that Ty Waller laugh, man. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. That is a big old hearty laugh. We'd love to hear yeah. it. Oh, two pitch, strike three called, and it looked like Lowry knew it. Backdoor curveball, and we have seen this thrown by Samarja to the lefties, freezing them. And you're right, Reddick knew it. Well, they could hear Pat Holberg before we saw the right arm. So that'll bring up vote. Mariners and the White Sox tied 1 1 in the seventh inning. And that one gets thrown away, and it's going to roll up against the sidewall, and Reddick's going to round second, but stop there. So the old pickoff throw gets away, and it's an air on the pitcher. I don't think Ty Waller had that hearty laugh this time. He no, hit the ground. He's not happy now. <laughs> see if you can see Ty Waller hit the ground as the throw really went at him to the inside, and Ty, ooh. He stumbled a little bit, but he had to get down. Unexpected. Oh, there's a smile. He's okay. <laughs> but the last thing is a first base coach you want to do. You don't want to get hit number one, but you also don't want to get hit because it will deaden the ball and won't be able to advance the That's base. Right. And in this ballpark, maybe two bases. <laughs> well, and that was what was surprising that Parmley could get the ball quickly enough that Reddick were stopping back and slowed him down a little bit, but Normally, an overthrow at first results in two bases, but not this time. Vote to right, and that baby's gone. Six to two, the A's lead. Two-run home run in the first game. Help the A's shut out the Twins three to nothing, and tonight he does it again. And they believe in Stephen Volk. Well, they chanted, and they continue to chant. He keeps coming through. So home run number seven for Vote. Give him 27 RBIs. Drops in first strike. 
just thinking about Didono, his third inning pitching, similar to what he did earlier in the season. He gave it up nothing until this inning and a leadoff base hit on a bunt with a shift. And Reddick moves to second, and Stephen Boat brings him home. Two and one now to Sogard, who has walked twice and scored. Dustin Pedroia just got a base hit to break up that no hitter down in Anaheim. Still just a two nothing lead for the Angels. Three and one. Forty five pitches for Danuno. Came in to start the third inning. Not close, and for the third time, Sogard walks. Well, you watch Stephen Boat stay back on the off speed pitch, actually hanging curveball, but a good solid swing from Boat, who hit it, knew it was gone. And remember, he came up to the A's, oh, for what, 33 at his first base? Like, hit was a home run, and oh, is he swinging about well? And, he keeps finding a way to get him in the lineup, whether first base or DH, and he keeps coming through with some big hits. So damage from the bottom of the order, and that has been big for the A's really the entire season. His now it's Coco Crisp, his fourth at bat, and we're in the fifth inning. Right, Sogard coming through some big hits last night a two run double, but tonight three walks. In the dirt, one and one. Catcher Fryer might be the MVP for the Twins tonight. Yeah, his job blocking balls. Uh, when you've caught what over 110 pitches, yeah. <laughs> and you're not even really halfway through the game, a lot of work. You're right. That means you've seen a lot of pitches because <laughs> yes, you have. I mean, with uh, nine walks by themselves, and that's gotta keep you busy. And I'll make it ten. So far, it makes it ten for the night. Another curveball inside, two and two. Behind Coco Crisp and Crisp, neither one really have a stride, and you can see how they're able to take the curveballs. They start to swing, but recognize the spin. And we've seen Fold do it. Of course, Coco has continued throughout his time with the A's, watching him do that. It enables you to see the ball a long time, wait till it gets on you before you make a commitment. Runner goes, and the pitch is a strike. Throw to second base is light. So Coco does not like the strike three call, and he's Chewing on Pat Holberg pretty good, so it's a strikeout and a stolen base. Well, fortunately, Sogo got a great jump because Fryer made a quick throw and Coco threw his bat, headed to first base, and then showed his displeasure with the pitch, which did not look that bad to be honest. On the at least from the point of the height on the corner, but Coco with an excellent eye and he thought it was ball four. So two outs for Sam Fold. So Fold tonight, a single, a walk, and a ground out, and he has scored two runs. First 
pitch called the strike. Big bouncer to Parmalee. He'll take it himself. Side retired. Steven Vogt. A long home run to right field. It was his seventh of the year. So the A's add two more. We're headed to the sixth inning. And the A's lead it six to two. Hey, it's time for the AT&T Fan Photo, the game tweet your photo to CSNCA Fan Photo. Put your name down, also your hometown, for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast. Tonight's fan photo comes from Amy Contreras from Fremont, and it's Abby's first A's game. So we appreciate it, Amy. Thanks for the photo. And tonight it's 6-2, to two, the A's lead. See, that young lady may be... Sending in the photo right now for tomorrow's telecast. Six to two, the A's lead thanks to Vote's two run homer that tacked down a couple more. And after we saw the Twins come back last night with five in the seventh inning, tacking on is a good idea. Score and add on as much as possible. Still in shock from last night seeing the Twins score the five, but. From the twin standpoint, down as they are right now, have to be feeling pretty good about themselves that they can come back. So they have to run in the A's bullpen. That's not too good for them. One two pitch is hit toward right center. Reddick on the move is not going to get it. He is able to cut it off near the warning track, and Parmalee has to stop and go back. Maybe the longest single you'll ever That's see. Right. Well, Josh Reddick did the smart thing. Of course, we know he has a very strong arm, but if you watch him go into the gap, it's probably thinking about two, and Reddick knows that, but Josh does not panic. Once he cuts the ball off, watch how he stops and make sure he gets behind everything and makes the strong throw. And probably would have been out if he had continued to second base. And Paul Molitor, the Hall of Fame first base coach, kind of patted him on the back, probably saying, nice, smart move, kid, because. He would have been out. But Reddick cut it off. Paul Molitor would have had a double. This speed, he'd have been standing. Second. But Parmalee, he's got to be thinking, ah, I got it easy. I'm going to make it. Then, oh, let's get back. And that was a smart move on his part to get back, and because he would have been out. So hit number six for the Twins. Here's Escobar. 
And he takes a strike, may have won around. That thing about Paul Molitor, of course, the Hall of Famer, but every time he got a hit, he always thought two. Mm -hmm. So that meant that every time he hit a single, at least he was thinking double, and if he could take it, he'd take it. Otherwise, he'd get back to first. But it's a pretty good philosophy that that means you're hustling hard to first base on every ball hit. And, and I bet, I bet on every ball in the gap, he thought three. Uh, well, that's true. <laughs> that's why he got his 3,000 hit with a triple. But he was an excellent player. Guys trying to emulate his stance of really no stride, just upper body throughout his career. That one just fouled down third. But managers, they say we don't have any rules. I'll do two. Be on time and give me 90 feet. In other words, run hard for 90 feet. Well, if you're thinking 180, well, you can always get the 90 on a base hit. He got over 3,000, but man, when he turned the bag, he had second on his mind. And that's a great way to approach your base run. Played in Milwaukee. Yeah. It was a big deal. It was a big deal, actually. He and Robin, yeah. Huge deal, both in the Hall of Fame. And a curveball, and Escobar swings and misses. Strikeout number four for Samarja. I guess they call him the Shark for a reason, huh? Because that's a pretty good pitch. And John Lester didn't want to come out of the game. On Thursday in the ninth inning, pitched a three hit shutout. This man never wants to come out of the game, regardless of the pitch count. Here's Eric Fryer, the catcher. Well, down in Anaheim, things have changed quickly as the Red Sox have scored three times really? in the top of the seventh, and they're still batting. And Seen that game going on in this inning, and Angels have made a couple of extremely costly errors that, quite frankly, from the looks of it, cost them two runs. Hmm. Should have been out of the inning on a double play that wasn't turned at all. So the Red Sox have taken a three to two lead. Richards is out of the game, and they're still batting with only one out. Remember, Richards had a no hitter through six innings, and all that is gone. Do you know it's unfortunate how many times we see that where a pitcher can have that kind of a streak going. He gives up a hit and everything falls apart. Sometimes. It is amazing. And there's sometimes the hit, the shutout, everything goes at once and with a home run. If it happens to be the first one, but it's unfortunate the errors have been costly. But Cespedes had a, a big hit in that inning. But as I said, they're still batting, so Red Sox trying to add on. And here the A's did add on with a Stephen Bolt two run home run. Swing and a miss. He reached back for a little bit extra. Pitch number 105 is a strikeout. Two outs here in the sixth inning. 105 and it must have seen for Fryer at about 105 miles per hour that extra fastball velocity on the inside corner long stride from the tall right hander and man by the time he takes a stride and releases the ball feels like from a hitter standpoint he's standing on top of you. So with two outs Schaefer steps in. Okay, for a walk and a ground out. First pitch, a little slider on the outside corner. That's been a pretty good pitch Let's for Samarja. How about that? That's extra in the tank. Average of 95. It's so much of it in the tank. He's just throwing all out with a 95. If you're averaging 95, it's pretty good. Hasn't thrown that many split finger fastballs. No to sliders. Seems like more sliders yeah. tonight. No one pitches ripped into the right field corner. Reddick hustling over. He'll play it off the wall. 
Parmalee is going to get to third and he'll be held there. So it's second and third and two outs on a double by Schaefer. And Josh Reddick so far has saved a run in this inning because by cutting the Parmalee ball off, this would have driven him home if he's at second base, but he's at first and Schaefer hit it hard. Reddick got to this one also, got it back in quickly. But by keeping Parmley at first, Parmley could only get the third. And he's running hard, and Scott Holger just not much of a chance except just to hold him up and hope for a two out hit. So it'll be up to Danny Santana. Santana's one for three, doubled and scored in the fifth. So Samarja, 108 pitches with Otero getting loose in the bullpen. There's a shot right into the glove of Moss, and that's how the top of the sixth ends. Two runners stranded, six two A's as we go to bottom of the sixth. One offense. How Josh Donaldson with bases loaded and two outs, a two run single. And then Derek Norris again drew a bases loaded walk. So the first four runs all scoring with two outs for Stephen Volk. This was a hammered home run and a curveball dropped the head on it and a two run shot following a Josh Reddick leadoff bunt base hit with a shift. He's scoring two runs. In the fifth inning to give themselves a six to two lead. Sam Daduno is back out there for his fourth inning of work. He's allowed two runs in three innings. Samarja, six innings, seven hits, two runs, and 109 pitches. Donaldson's had a good night doubled in the first singled home a pair in the second and grounded out in the fourth. So he reaches the 80 RBI mark. Oh. Off speed pitch on 2 and 0 oh is in first strike. to follow and then Norris here in the sixth big curve and it's now two and two. Curveball is a little bit different than what he saw from May. May kind of hung them 
towards the inner half of the plate, and that's when he hit one for a double one with a two run single. But this curveball from Danino was sharply breaking away from him and couldn't catch up. And that's what you want to do with the curveball right hander on right hander. And there's another curveball, and Danino has a good one. It's a big breaker. The Red Sox got the three and no more. So bottom of the seventh now with Clay Buckholt still pitching for the Red Sox and Boston leading three to two over the Angels. Oh, and that hit Donaldson. Got him either in the hip or right above the hip, and that was a fastball. There he lifts the leg. He cannot turn away, although he tried, but he got him in the in the backside right there. Oh man, right on the hip bone. So runner aboard the tough way. It's Donaldson. Here's Moss. Boss has walked twice and grounded out. And he rips one to right, and that's a hit. So that's a good sign for Moss. And two walks and a very, very good fastball or a good uh, base hit on what looked like maybe a little bit of a cutter off speed, but hit hard by Brandon Moss. And that's a very good sign. Especially hits him that hard on line drive. He's going to start getting more elevation and it'd be the long ball. Actually hit the ball this last time up the middle, but his shift was on and with the shortstop playing behind second. So Norris steps up. Norris has a runner in scoring position. He's got a couple of RBIs thanks to two bases loaded walks tonight. Ryan Presley gets up. Curve for a strike to Norris. So Norris now with 44 RBIs on the year. Throwing that curveball. Yeah. Well, he has definitely given some innings to his uh, his manager pitching coach tonight. He's done a performance. pretty good job. Yeah. Right? He's walked three. And he has struck out three. Make that struck out four. And that one hit the left. That baby's gone. That's a three run shot for Norris, and it's now nine to two. The A's lead. I guess he likes the curveball a little bit too much, huh? He laid that one up there on a tee. Man. Hanging, breaking ball, and Derek Norris absolutely crushed it. Get some double figures in. Home runs, and he knew it was gone when he hit it. So Norris with a five RBI night. And that is his sixth three run home run. He has a grand slam. So Cap, you did the math recently on the home runs hit alone by Derek Norris. And he has hit him with a lot of runners on base. Yep. So 47 RBIs now for Norris. Sixth time he has hit a three run homer. Reddick takes a strike, two and one. 
also got Phil Coke for the Grand Slam. So quite a lot of production from Derek Norris from behind the plate with the long ball. Two now to Reddick. Reddick had a bunt single in the fifth inning, and two batters later, Vote hit a home run. So he's one for three. That one's hit to center, and that's hit well. Santana back. Santana at the wall, and that is off the wall, and Reddick's got a long double. Now I think the young man's run out of gas, and Ron Gardenhire going out, but Josh Reddick blasts one to center field, and especially with a couple of strikes. That is a good swing because he did not open up. Opens up, he hits it for a home run if it hit it the same way, but instead straight away to center for the double. So when it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change, tune up and repair experts. to two A's lead Norris with a three run homer and Reddick followed that up with a booming double stayed on the curveball nicely and to drive to center field with a couple of strikes that's always a good swing when you see that happen. So three hits in the inning also a hit batter. Still nobody out so Ryan Presley comes in. Presley. Pitched in game one of the series on Thursday. Threw a couple of innings, gave up a hit, a walk, had a strikeout. So his seventh appearance overall. Lowry drives into right field. Schaefer back, still going back, and he reaches up and hauls it in. So Lowry hit it well, but that's the first out. That a boy, Tony. I like the way Tony does the Bernie lean. One arm up. <laughs> Having a good time. Good for him. Well, he was in the Angels in the outfield, filmed right here up right. in the suite, doing the flying like the Angels. Mm -hmm. So Reddick tagged up and went to third. Infield comes in and Vote has an RBI opportunity. First pitch is right in there for a strike. Vote with a two run homer in the fifth inning. A's with one in the first, three in the second, two in the fifth, three here in the sixth. A 
time. Now block in the dirt with the runner at third by Mr. Fryer. Yeah, these fans are something. They go all out. And that's that's a big league uh, banner there. On the ground, it's scooped up by Parmalee. Reddick's going to have to hold, and that's out number two. The vote cannot get Reddick home, and it'll be up to Sogar. Sogar has walked three times. He has scored a run, and he has stole a base. The Angels did not score in the bottom of the seventh, so eight hitting now, 3 2 Boston. In Oakland A's history, the number nine hitter has never walked four times in a game. One and oh. Think he knows it? <laughs> no, I don't think he does. <laughs> I agree. He'd probably like to get a hit here. But if your ninth place hitter is walking, you know you're turning the lineup over. Yeah. Thing is, Sogard is very good at taking pitches, and then he likes to use the word ambush that we we see hitters do. They'll kind of lull you to sleep, and then you throw them a pretty good pitch, and they jump all over. Let's see if Sogard is doing that here. That one misses outside, and it's three and up. Twins pitchers have walked ten tonight. And he did. He just walked for the fourth time. Yeah, the possum. <laughs> you don't like that kite? The possum shows up uh, and Sogard walks for the fourth time. Yeah, I'm good with the Sogard walk thing. That, <laughs> other, that other thing I'm not that great with. <laughs> If you can find me a more unattractive animal. <laughs> You're right there. They're moving around in the bullpen. See, they're not that thrilled with that guy down there either. The these relievers. <laughs> oh man. One and one to Coco Crisp. First and third, two outs. Norris with a three run homer in the sixth inning. Coco takes a strike and it's one and two. Goes 0 for 3 with a walk. And he swings and misses. Side retired. Derek Norris, a three run homer. Norris has knocked in five tonight. And the A's are headed into blowout territory. 9 to 2 over the Twins after six.
time now for the Ford right choice. Last night, the bullpen once again saved the day. Cook came in, got Jordan Schaefer to strike out to end the seventh. Gregerson, how about a nine pitch eighth inning? One, two, three. Sean Doolittle then would come on to the ninth inning. He would give up a single, then he would strike out Josh Willingham to end the game. He's have a 28 and two thirds inning scored a streak. Oakland record. And Sean Doolittle now has 18 saves. And new as a uh, left hander record as well for the saves by left handers. So, how about that for last night? Put them in the record book. Tonight, the A's in the record book again. Sogard with four walks. But bullpen now will try to get the last nine outs as Dan Otero starts the seventh. What a time for change. Think Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up, your oil change tune up and repair expert. So, Otero's first appearance in this series. Part of the terrific A's bullpen. Otero here in the seventh. Samarja goes six. 109 pitches for the A's starting pitcher. Dozier, Plouffe, Vargas for the Twins. Sliced foul. Well, the crowd tonight, 32,074. 32074. So not quite a sell up, but a nice crowd on a very good crowd on a Saturday night. Including Tony Lewis. Uh, and Tony sees a strikeout. Otero paints the outside corner as Dozier. Does not like the call at all. Pat Holberg has not been friends with everybody tonight. Well, if anything about the height of it, but it's not as if Pat Holberg has not called the high strike. He's called the low strike, the high strike. And that one was a strike. First pitch to Plouffe is a strike. Plouffe has got a couple of RBIs. Both the Twins runs batted in. A single in the first knocked in one. A ground ball in the fifth knocked in the other. Sogar grabs it. Troy. So two, two quick outs for Otero, and now he faces Kenny Vargas. Number 19, Kenny Vargas. Vargas has been on base a couple times. Actually, he's been on base all three times. Fielder's choice hit by pitch in a single. The Angels are coming to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. With the Red Sox leading three to two. And Buckholtz back out there. Hmm. He's over 100 pitches. But there's a line drive, and that's a hit. Reddick gets there to cut it off. So Kenny Vargas with a couple of hits. So we've been impressed with him, Ray, and we heard good things about him. Well, he, he's impressive, and just the fact, as big as he is, he'll take his singles. He knows, and Twins know he can hit home runs. How about this guy? He's a designated hitter. He was shagging fly balls at target field, in the outfield, with yeah. a bat. And Ron Gardenhire said, "No, don't think we're going to do that." So I think he was trying to say. I'm a hitter. <laughs> I'm going to carry my bat with me wherever I go. And Gardick had to say, no, let's take your glove out there to shag. But DH and tell you what, if he can hit the ball the way he has hit in this series, very hard. I mean, Donaldson had the one through his legs last night, the hardest he had ever seen hit at him. Willingham with a line drive, and that's a hit. So back to back line drive singles, and that'll bring up Parmalee. Nine hits now for the Twins. They had 10 total hits in the first two games of this series. Now number 27, Chris Parmalee. So the left handed hitting Parmalee steps in.
Parmley is one for three. He had a single in the sixth inning. He hit that ball that Reddick cut off and held him to a single. Now, if they're saying that's a foul ball or not, Vargas went to third. And I think they're saying it was not a foul I ball. I think he just missed it, Kipe. I think he swung over it. And it's a pass ball given to Derek Norris, but slider that just kept sliding on him and got him a half swing by Parmalee, but Derek couldn't handle it. So one and one the count. So Vargas moved up second to third. Willingham stayed at first. Tap slowly right side off the mound is Otero. I'll take it myself. He says side retired seventh inning stretch from the Coliseum nine to two. The A's lead the twin. Well, that's very kind, Kate. Thank you. I thought she was talking about the Oakland A's team. No, I think she was talking about you and I. Kate's going to be a mom soon, so we wish her the best of luck. It'll be full Donaldson and Moss, bottom of the seventh inning. Fold has been on base twice, scored twice. Mike Trout just hit a solo home run in the bottom of the eighth inning. And that game is now tied. Right center. <laughs> Seen him do that oh, before? Oh, yes. How about a, a cycle with the home run? To right center. Completed the side. Hey, what? Watch, watching Trout hit balls to right center field is, from a pure baseball yeah. standpoint, is about as pretty as you're going to get. That's right. So they're all tied 3 3, bottom of the eighth and Anna. Fold slaps it foul. That one rattled into our camera well. The one and two to fold. These have eight hits. They've received 11 walks tonight. 
And again, Fold hits it high and foul near the same spot. Curveball from Presley, and that's a strikeout for out number one. A 12 to 6 curveball and caught nicely by Fryer as it almost hit the ground, but sharp 12 to 6, and that's always a tough pitch to hit. So Donaldson steps up. A lot of A's have had good nights offensively, including Donaldson. Two for three, two RBIs. A run scored. Was hit by a pitch. That was in the sixth inning, and then he scored on the Norris home run a couple batters later. Base hit right field. How about that? Breaking ball, and he just shoots it to right field. So three hits for Donaldson. Ace Baseball and Comcast Sports Center California is brought to you by Prism. Now your team can collaborate at a whole new level with video walls from Prism. Learn how at Prism.com. So Donaldson aboard with the one out single and that'll bring up Moss. Twins go into the shift for Moss. This time three infielders are on the right side of the diamond. Earlier in the game Escobar the shortstop was actually on the third base side of second base, not a lot, just a little bit. Inside corner strike. I remember Brandon Moss was uh, hit in, well, I was thinking it was New York, Chase, or uh, City Field, the Mets. And, or one came close before he hit the home run, but he said, I'm on top of the plate. I'm going to get pitched inside. And we have seen how much pitchers just like to stay inside and going back again at the time of the slider. There are times when a hitter gets hit and they get upset. In the case of Brandon Moss, he said, I'm on top of the plate, so I'm not surprised if I get hit. Well, it's kind of a refreshing way to look yeah. at it. It's not like he, he enjoys it, but he realizes that if he's close to the plate, there are times that he is going to have one hit off his body someplace. You know, Moss strikes out. So two away here in the bottom of the seventh and the, the big hitting hero Norris steps up. All right, fastball this time gets Brandon Moss. And it's not inside, but a little bit elevated. So Norris with five RBIs tonight. Two bases loaded walks and a three run homer. How about that? Now with 10 home runs and 47 runs batted in. He's done that in 108 games. He's closing in on 400 at bats. Take that back. He's looking at Moss's numbers. For Norris, this is his 87th game. And he's got just a Shade over 250 at bats. So that's pretty good production yes, for yeah. Norris, who's playing most of the time, but still not probably not considered everyday catcher, although I think it's going to happen soon enough in his career. He's a guy the twins dug out tonight who thinks he should be catching every day. Sure. 
And I think eventually he will be behind the plate on a regular basis. So Norris strikes out, and that's how the bottom of the seventh comes to an end. Eighth inning coming up. All A's. They lead nine to two. Get Happy Camp powered by Toyota Prius. So the fans again tonight having a good time. Their team keeps on winning the athletics with a 9-2 lead in this game. They have a 39-20 record at the Coliseum. That is a terrific home record. Even Tony LaRusso doing the Bernie lean. The giveaway tonight, the Tony LaRusso bobblehead. So the A's six outs away from their 72nd win. And congratulations to Tony La Russa going to the Hall of Fame. Already in the Hall of Fame, I should say, happened a couple weeks ago. He had the uh, plaque that is in Cooperstown, was down on the field. And I remember he said whenever he was not going to have a logo on his cap. And he said I could take it to Chicago, to Oakland, to St. Louis, and nobody would say anything because it's a blank yeah. cap. And very smart on his part as he appreciated the three organizations that he managed. And I think you can certainly understand his dilemma. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Escobar rips one to right center and it's headed for the gap and it's going to roll all the way to the wall. So Escobar has a couple of doubles tonight. And the Twins have 10 hits. Oh, he went down to get another one. Actually, not a bad pitch by Dan Otero, a good sinker that a good hitting by this young man who hit at the gap. How about this, Ray? He's got 29 doubles. About that. Eduardo Escobar. He's become the pretty much the everyday shortstop for the Twins. And he's done a good job. So here's Eric Fryer. Speed helps, and Escobar has it. Of course, hitting the ball the way he did. Surprised he didn't go for three. Settled in for the double. That one roll foul. We've seen this young man uh, catch well tonight. How about Caleb Joseph getting a chance to catch in Baltimore? And doing a great job. Hit a home run for the fifth consecutive game. Set a record for catchers for the Orioles. And Matt Weeders missed, but it certainly helps that they put somebody else in there. They're doing that. 
the young man said he was thinking about hanging him up. He's 28. He's thinking about retiring six, seven months ago. And here he's going to the record books for the Orioles. But getting a chance to catch, and you're right, when Weeder's season ended with uh, elbow surgery, it's Tommy John. It's, they're still winning. Lowry across, and Friars retire. So one out here in the top of the eighth inning. Well, you're right. The Orioles won again today. They beat a St. Louis Cardinals ten to three. And <laughs> how many more home runs? They hit three more home wow. runs today, and they lead the major leagues with 147 home runs. Nelson Cruz hit his 30th. Now the A's have seen the Orioles twice, and Nelson Cruz was struggling yeah. both times the A's saw him. But he's hitting against everybody else. So the Orioles since the All-Star break are 15 and 7. And with the Yankees losing today, the Orioles now have a 6-game lead in the East over both the Yankees and the Blue Jays. 67 and 49. So yesterday they hit 43,000 yeah. on a Saturday night. Line drive right center field, that's a hit. Schaefer is going to dig for two. Escobar is going to come in to score. And the bullpen has allowed a run. And it has been a while. I thought when uh, Otero induced a ground ball from Fryer to the left side of the infield, not able to advance the runner to third. So it stops at 30 consecutive innings, which uh, that in itself, congratulations. Dan Otero's not going to be happy, but well, he's that, not. that's and quite he probably an accomplishment. Knows it too. Yeah, that's a, quite an accomplishment. So a couple of doubles in the inning and here's Santana. The Indians beat the Yankees today three to nothing at Yankee Stadium. Kluber got his 13th win he beat McCarthy. They were Derek Jeter. Past Honus Wagner in career hits. So Jeter now with 3,431 career hits. That's pretty so, impressive. <laughs> that is impressive. You know what? I'm, I'm glad we got to yeah. see him play. So he is sitting in the sixth spot, and that's probably where he's well, that is where he's going to end up. You see Tris Speaker is fifth. And Jeter with you know, 45 games left to play, something like that. I think for Derek Jeter, he's he's been a champion only twice since '96. Has he not played in postseason? He didn't know what to do going home after the end of the season. But unlike Mariano Rivera, who announced his retirement last year and the season ended unfortunately without postseason, I think Jeter would just love to play in October. Yeah, they got a shot. Yes, they do. Yankees are playing better, but it's his his last season, and I think he'd like to finish on that positive note. I think the Yankees would just like to get a couple pitchers back there. Yeah, that's true. Tanaka. And sounds like Michael Pineda may be coming back soon. So they've played well enough to stay in the race. And certainly more so in the wild card now as they're six back in the division. Two, two pitches foul back. Okay, so Brian McCann went on the seven day uh, concussion concussion. Yeah. yeah. The Blue Jays beat the Tigers three to two in ten innings and it was a blown save for Nathan in the ninth. Hmm. And then the Blue Jays scored a run in the tenth and. So that's got to be a disappointing loss for the Tigers. And Joe Nathan just has not been able to put it together. Is low three and two. So with that Tiger loss, and we told you the Royals behind James Shields shut out the Giants. So Shields beat the A's over the weekend. Yep. And he beats Sunday. the Giants tonight. Eric O'Flaherty is throwing. There's a base hit center field. 
Santana will go to third and stop there or make that Schaefer go to third and stop there. So Santana with a base hit. Fans, you can look like Coco with your very own Coco Crisp replica jersey presented by Cash Creek Casino Resort at the 105 p.m. Labor Day matinee against the Seattle Mariners. September the 1st, 15,000 fans will walk away with his authentic green replica A's jersey. For information and tickets, visit athletics.com slash tickets today. So Kurt Young is going to Talk to Otero, who has thrown 32 pitches. He's given up five hits in an inning and a third. So now Cook gets up with Dozier stepping in the box. Dozier off his foot. So Schaefer at third, Santana at first. With Swarzak in the Twins bullpen. Close pitch outside corner, but called the ball by Pat Holbert. Yeah, remember last night the five runs in the seventh, the Twins trying to make some noise in this inning. It is the eighth. That one called the ball two and one. Cook loosening up quickly out in the bullpen. And Dan Otero, ground ball pitcher, he'd like to get a ground ball to one of Mike Gallego's infielders and try to get a double play to get out of the inning. And that is just foul, not by much. So two and two the count. Astros beat the Rangers tonight, eight to three in Houston. Feldman over Darvish. Rangers might be the team that's looking forward to the end of the offseason off and turning the calendar on January the 1st, start fresh in 2015. And they and the Colorado Rockies are tied for the worst record in all of baseball. Another 2 2 pitch, but first to throw to first. Shallow center. Coco coming in. Schaefer tagging. Schaefer's coming home. And that's a sacrifice fly for Dozier, who picks up his 50th RBI. And it's now 9 to 4. Number 24. So now Plouffe will hit. The White Sox scored a run in the top of the 10th inning and are leading the Mariners 2 to 1. Lots of pitching up there in that ball game. Reddick hustling in, he'll get there. Reaches up, grabs it inside, retired. Couple of runs on three hits for the Twins. Bottom of the eighth coming up. He's nine, Twins four.
Game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. 4-12 and 1 for the Twins. 9-9 and 1 for the Athletics. Maybe the biggest number, or one of the biggest numbers, is that the A's have received 11 walks tonight. Samarja pitched well again. Six innings, gave up just a couple of runs. And Derek Norris has five RBIs in the game. So this is the bottom of the eighth inning with Reddick, Lowry, and Vote. Oh, it's a new pitcher for the Twins. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change, tune-up, and repair experts. So Anthony Swarzak comes in. He pitched last night. So Tony La Russa, it looks like he may be calling it a night. With a good hack, fouls it into the second level. So they're in the tenth inning, top of the tenth down in Anaheim, three-three game, Red Sox Angels. Fastball is high, so it's been May for two, to do no for three. Presley for two, and now Anthony Swarzak. Popped it up, shallow center. And calling everybody off is Santana, and that's the first out here in the eighth. So Reddick two for five as he heads back to the dugout. And now Lowry will hit. Lowry does not have a hit tonight. He's 0 for 3 with a walk. Every ace hitter has reached base. Including Eric Sogard walking four times. Pitch is a strike to Lowry. And we found out that's a record. Got to be a said? Yeah. Ninth place batter walking four times in a game. Huh. And Hoodie's got that information. It was popped up there yeah. before he even got the fourth yeah. walk. It's all in his head. This is genius. Josh Hood, our terrific graphics operator, works extremely hard. It when he does his etch a sketch. Yeah, yeah, on the plane. Yeah. Even when you just sit and have a just a normal day to day conversation with Josh, talks about graphics. Yeah. Brilliant man. He's a brilliant man. He's ours. Fisted flare down the right field line, but it's going to drop right between the bullpen mound and home plate. Make sure you join us tomorrow. The A's and the Twins will wrap up this four game series. Jason Hamill and Phil Hughes. Coverage begins at 12 30 with A's pregame live. Complete A's coverage every night on Sportsnet Central and CSNCalifornia.com. The home of A's baseball is Comcast Sports. And so Hughes and Hamill. Phil Hughes, an 11 game winner. Strike three called to Lowry, and that's the second out. Nine strikeouts by Twins pitchers tonight. Fastball a little bit up, but down the middle, and good fastball from Forza. So Volk will hit. Volt's got a home run tonight. That was in the fifth inning. See where the Mariners inducted Lou Pinella into their Hall of Fame today, which was a well-deserved and nice gesture.
So congratulations to Lou Pinnell and to the Mariners Hall of Fame. I, I would say he deserves that. Absolutely. I think they have bobblehead for him as well. Did they? Remember down in uh, Miami? Chance to see the bobblehead display, the huge display. They had the thing bouncing, so the heads bobbed. Luke Pinella's head was like he was yelling at umpires. It was boom, boom. It was, <laughs> it was up and down constantly, man. That's the way it should be with Luke. I know. That was appropriate. He was one of the best at arguing. We'll, we'll feel the dreams, Uni, there. Look at that. Deal with White Elephant. Look at that catcher's mitt, too. So two and two, the count to vote. Yeah, Stephen Vote could he could go field the Dreams uniform, <laughs> yes, and he, he would look could. fine in that. Come out of the corn stalks. Yep. he could do it. Yeah. And he's going to get a hit because he's Stephen Vote. Two for five. The problem now is every time I look at Stephen Vogt, I think about the headband and the referee <laughs> jersey and the glasses yeah. and the whistle and the socks up high. Can't get that visual out of my head. As a 2-1 fastball, then Stephen Vogt, and talking about, matter of fact, he, he commented about the lack of walks, and he said, there are times that I could have walked, but he said, I like to hit. I like to swing the bat, which at times he will go out of the strike zone. And... Uh, I think he just did on the 2 1 fastball that was probably a pitcher's pitch, but it went down and drove it to right field. So Sogard will hit. Can he walk five times? We're going to find out. So that game's a final. The White Sox beat the Mariners 2 to 1 in 10 innings. Warzak picks it up, throws to first wow. side, retired. So these get a hit, the runner left. Ninth inning coming up. Looks like it's going to be Eric O'Flaherty to try to finish it off. 9 4 Athletics lead. On Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Xfinity, home of the most live sports, and by Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. So nine to four, the A's lead the Twins. Trying to wrap up their third straight win in this series over the Twins. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change, tune-up, and repair expert. So Eric O'Flaherty comes in for appearance number 11. So Otero goes two innings after Samarja goes six.
big swing by Kenny Vargas. Vargas is two for three. He's been on base all four times. A's post game live coming up after the ball game. And a one two slider and a good one and Vargas strikes out. So what a way here in the night. Here are tonight's Honda players plural of the game. The long ball. How about Stephen Vogt? A curveball. And it left the yard. A big two run shot. It gave the A's a six to two lead. Derek Norris then a hanging curveball. He knew it. His sixth third three run home run of the season. Putting a grand slam double figures at home runs. And I guess if you hit two on Mother's Day and one on Father's Day. Three run home runs. You should have a bunch on the season. So Stephen Boat, Derek Norris, Honda players of the game. So here's Willingham, who's one for four. And he rips one to left field, fold back, and he's got it. Just didn't have quite the right sound to it. So Willingham one for five and the final out the final hope for the twins. And Flaherty hopes the final out is Chris Parmalee. So series finale tomorrow join us at 1230. It's Hughes and Hamill and then a, a tough road trip for the athletics four in Kansas City three in Atlanta. First pitch is in the dirt. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie sticking around. Wants to see the finale. So one and one to Parmalee, who's one for four. Side. And now three and one. Well, the A's did a lot of their damage early. Damage early and damage in the middle. Boy, as you look at it, it's from a lineup standpoint, it's damage up and down the lineup. Donaldson should do it, and he does. He grabs it for the final out, and the Oakland A's beat the Minnesota Twins for the 12th consecutive time. And tomorrow, they will go for the four-game sweep. So game three of the series goes to the A's as Samarja gets the win. He goes six innings tonight. Final score from the O.Co. Coliseum in front of 32,074. It's the A's nine and the Twins four. You've been watching Oakland A's baseball at Comcast Sports in California. Don't go away. A's post game live with Guy Haberman and Pip Roberts starts right now.